uh, <clears throat> it is therefore now time for member statements. The member from Simcoe Gray. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm uh, pleased to rise today to remind members of this House and all Ontarians that this Saturday marks Ontario's second annual Christmas Tree Day. This day is meant to bring awareness to the tremendous benefit the Christmas tree industry has on our province, not only to agriculture, but also benefits the environment, tourism, employment, and the economy. Christmas tree farmers of Ontario have a new slogan this year. It reads, we are tree farmers and we take carbon out of the air. It speaks to the organization's mandate to bring awareness to the benefit of buying a real Christmas tree. Mr. Speaker, let me briefly touch upon some of those benefits. Christmas trees are a renewable agricultural crop for every tree cut down, 10 more are planted to ensure sustainability. Tree farms counteract the human use of fossil fuels and remove 13 tonnes of airborne pollutants per acre per year. Trees provide a protective, a protective haven for a variety of bird and mammal species. The edge effect, created by a row of Christmas trees next to a wood lot or an open field, is known to increase wildlife diversity. Real Christmas trees are completely biodegradable and return their stored nutrients to the soil from which they came. Mr. Speaker, buying a Christmas tree is an easy way to help the environment and our economy. On behalf of Christmas tree farmers of Ontario, I encourage all Ontarians to buy a real tree this holiday season and help support an important industry in Ontario. Finally, I'd like to thank Fred Somerville and Shirley Brennan from Christmas Tree Farmers Ontario for their hard work and advocacy within the industry and toward the establishment of Christmas Tree Day. Hear, hear. A member from Windsor Tecumseh. Good afternoon, Speaker. I want to tell you about the Windsor Residents for Young Men. A friend of mine, Greg Goulin, saw the need for such a facility 16 years ago. Although our area has several places to house homeless young women, it was taken for granted that homeless teenage boys or young men could look after themselves. Windsor was the only major city in Canada where there was not a place to get homeless male youth off the streets. It took 12 years to get it open, but they've had tremendous success over the past four years. The Windsor Residence for Young Men helps clients find pride in themselves. They've had a 66% success rate and have helped hundreds of young people get their lives back on track. Some have been reunited with their families, some have found employment, and many of them are doing well in school again. They rely on donations, which is why they're struggling to pay their hydro bills. Hydro costs used to be $300, sometimes four, now there's $600, sometimes eight. Charities, such as the Windsor Residence for Young Men, should be using their money to keep young men off the streets. Instead, they're paying profits to the private investors who own more and more shares of Hydro One. This government should be providing hydro rate relief to charities that provide services to low-income and vulnerable people instead of selling off Hydro One. The Windsor Residence for Young Men doesn't support homelessness, Speaker. They want to end it. Thank you. Thank you. Further members, ladies and gentlemen, from Beaches East York. Well, thank you, Speaker. Today I want to talk a little bit about what an incredible week this has been for me. Uh, and it reminds me of how lucky all of us are to represent our constituencies in the House, the things that we get to do to help regular people in Ontario. This week, on Tuesday, the Committee of Regulations and Private Bills met to discuss my Bill 47, Protecting Loyalty Reward Points Bill. And I want to take this moment to thank the Premier for her leadership and the Minister for allowing me and, the, and all members of this House, uh, the House leaders particularly, for agreeing to fast track this bill through committee to third reading, which will happen next Monday. This is an important bill, I believe, for consumers in Ontario. At the committee, we heard from stakeholders, we heard from, we heard from individuals like Michael Judd, who represents so, like, the consumer experience for so many people who have tried to get onto websites, tried to get a hold of air miles in this case, in order to find out how many points of theirs were going to expire. They were concerned, they were angry about it. And in the course of conversations with my constituents in Beaches East York, we knew this was something we had to move on. We could have done nothing. But we became the only province so far in Canada who's moving on disallowing expiry of airport miles, and I'm very pleased that we're taking that leadership. And for me, this bill was the third private member's bill that I brought forward, which has that same theme of protecting consumers' rights, from the tipping bill, from stopping daycares from charging, on uh, charging uh, uh, administration fees. Now, I know everyone in this House has had experience with air miles, and we're delighted that we have an opportunity now to put an end to it. Thank you. Thank you. Member Stevenson, member from Huron Bruce. Thank you very much, Speaker. 
I would like to share my sincere congratulations to the citizen for once again achieving first place in the Canadian Community Newspaper Awards, the highest category in his class. The awards celebrate the best in community publishing from across the country. The level of excellence that has been displayed by the citizen in serving both North Huron and Huron East communities is extraordinary. This award really goes to show the level of commitment that this newspaper has put forth over the years in order to ensure balanced reporting and a comprehensive coverage of its local communities. It is interesting to note that The Citizen has been nominated for the Canadian Community Newspaper Awards previously in both 2014 and 2015. Its tradition of excellence was recognized once again this year, and it won first place in the categories of Best All-Round Newspaper, Best Editorial Page, and Best Front Page. The Citizen team is one that works hard to keep people and to keep people informed and succeeds in its commitment to write on lo local issues that are important and meaningful. Upon reading the judge's comments on The Citizen, what jumped out at me was this. This paper has soul, and I couldn't agree more. Thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you. For your member statements, the member from Nickelback. Thank you, Speaker. My office was contacted by Mrs. Sherry Allen regarding a frightening incident their family experienced on Monday while driving in Lively. As they were traveling south on Main Street, going under the first of two highway bridges, debris fell from the bridge, smashing a hole in the sunroof of their vehicle, with falling glass cutting their nine-year-old daughter on the neck. Thankfully, the da her daughter was okay. It could have been way worse. They are not the only one, Speaker. I have been uh, contacted, and I read her statement. I, too, have been victim of a rock falling, hitting my windshield from the overpass. Last Friday, my husband and I were hit by a rock on my sunroof. I had to replace the sunroof, and it cost me $1,300. This morning, I talked to the Minister of Transportation about those two bridges. It was confirmed that they are scheduled for rehabilitation next year, in addition to the scaling work that is underway right now. He reassured me that his ministry would work with the local MTO office to make sure that the two bridges are safe to drive on and that Main Street underneath it will also be safe for all traffic. I would uh, invite, though, if anybody else from my riding or around Lively have had a similar incident with pieces of the overpass falling on them as they were driving, or if they've seen an incident, please reach out to my office so we can coordinate with the Ministry of Transportation. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I would say shalom aleichem to our colleagues who are uh, here for uh, a bill that will be debated later on today. I would once again, Speaker, like to uh, objectively recognize the best president from the best college in the province of Ontario, and that is uh, Dr. Christopher L. G. Whitaker, who is the president of Humber College. He has a remarkable uh, track record, holding a PhD from the University of Toronto, an MA from York University, a bachelor's from Queen's. He's been uh, in his position as steward of Humber College since 2012, and what a jewel in the crown of Etobicoke North Speaker. Between the North and South Campus, we have something like on the order of more than 30,000 students, uh, residential spots for 1,000 students. We offer programs, uh, bachelor's degrees, diplomas, certificates, and it's an advanced skills and technology center, which I remember uh, christening opening some years ago uh, in fields as diverse as journalism and uh, media studies and hospitality and plumbing and woodworking and you name it. And of course, they are very ably accompanied today uh, by, as I mentioned earlier, the irreplaceable Jane Holmes, who not only served this government as a senior policy analyst in our, one of our ministries here, but then was also as well steward at the Ontario horse racing industry. And of course, we remember her fondly uh, from her days at Woodbine and the casino is coming. So thank you, Jane. Thank you, Dr. Whitaker, and thanks to uh, all that you do. You know they're going to get grief for that. <laughs> the, member, the member for what the asked for. Thank you, Speaker. I rise to speak about the ongoing review of the Ontario Municipal Board, and what's clear is that planning in Ontario has been and should continue to be a public democratic process. And, any adjudicative process that can supersede municipal decisions must ensure fair and equitable participation by local community members and should, Speaker, meaningfully employ processes 
and decision-making methods that include the public. Furthermore, municipalities are a mature form of government and are in a position to take on a more rigorous role in land use planning. And this requires, Speaker, a significant transformation of the Ontario Municipal Board's roles and responsibilities and procedures. If viewers of our proceedings this afternoon believe their council's planning decisions should hold more influence before an Ontario Municipal Board tribunal, then make your voices heard. If you have other ideas, make your voices heard as well. For far too long, Speaker, the Ontario Municipal Board has overruled good local planning decisions made by elected officials, and when those decisions are squashed, there's no appeal. This review is long overdue and clearly needed, and I strongly support the initiative and urge all Region of Durham residents to participate in the process. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? Further member statements? The member from Eglinton Lawrence. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to celebrate the great victory by Toronto FC yesterday at BMO Field. This is the by winning the Eastern Division Championship over Montreal, this means we'll have the first Canadian team that will be in the MLS Championship Final here on December the 10th here in Toronto. You know, the uh, Toronto FC, the Reds, really reflect the true uh, nature and the fabric and diversity of Ontario. If you look at the team, you have Josie Altidore from the U.S., Benoit Chereau from uh, France, Sebastian Javinko, the atomic ant from Italy, you have Tosan Ricketts from uh, Jamaica, and uh, Chris Manella, who uh, lives at College and Grace. This team has excited people from all over Ontario, all over Canada. It is a vibrant expression of sportsmanship, of excellence. It also is good for the local economy in uh, keeping our downtown alive. And it is also a great role model for our young people, whether they be boys or girls, to uh, play sports and participate. And we wish Toronto FC the best of luck as they go forward in representing Canada in the MLS Championship December the 10th here in Toronto. Congratulations. Further member statements. The member from Bruce Gray Owen South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to voice my constituents' growing concern over the continued lack of access to mental health services in Bruce Gray Owen Sound, an issue that I am personally passionate about. The lack of available psychiatrists, mental health beds, and other mental health resources is beginning to take its toll on my local hospital emergency departments, who are increasingly dealing with suicidal youth and people suffering from schizophrenia. Instead of matching patients with beds, emergency department staff are calling in police officers at a very great cost to guard these patients who continue to wait for beds. If you can imagine, Mr. Speaker, this is an impossible task with so few beds in Ontario and where we still have regions without any youth mental health beds, such as the North Simcoe Muskoka Lynn. I recently listened to comments from Dr. Susan Boron from Hanover District Hospital, who spoke very candidly and openly about the consequences of the long-standing problem with the shortage of beds, psychiatrists and outreach that is putting the safety of patients and staff in dire straits. Dr. Boron called it a crisis and warned that it could easily turn into a publicity nightmare for the province. This warning was echoed by the Auditor General, whose report released yesterday confirmed a 50 percent increase in the number of youth and children needing a mental health bed. As Ontario continues to go with a coherent mental health system and where care continues to be scattered over multiple ministries and agencies, I take this opportunity to issue another call on the government to immediately direct resources to my communities in Bruce Gray and all communities across Ontario facing these huge gaps in service so that our children and youth and people in need can get the mental health care service they need. I also encourage all members to continue to speak up on these concerns to the Minister of Health and remind him that the time for action is now. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. I thank all members for their uh, statements. It's therefore now time for reports by committees. The member from Lambton, Cat Middlesex.